the sabbath dear friends in today's story we will have a small description of sabbath which is the fourth commandment in the 10 commandments that god gave moses like god rested on the seventh day after completing his work in 6 days he gave the israelites a sabbath as a rest do you remember where we first learned about the sabbath We first learned about the Sabbath in the book of Exodus when God gave the Israelites manna in the wilderness. There he commanded them to gather twice as much manna on the 6th day and not to gather it on the 7th day because it was to be a day of rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. The Sabbath was not only one day of the week that was given as rest, but along with that God also told them to keep the 7th year as a sabbatical year. That year was to be a rest for the land. They were not to sow their fields or prune their vineyards. Whatever the land yields during the Sabbath will be food for them. But God, who knew that the Israelites would ask what they would eat if they do not plant or harvest the crop, promised that He would send a blessing in the sixth year, so that the land will yield enough for two years, which is until they are able to harvest what they have sown in the eighth year. Isn't our God so mindful of us? Yet we often forget this in our daily lives, right? If we come back to the story, this year was to be a rest not only to the land, but also after they reach Canaan, if one of their brothers sells himself as a slave, the master is to set the slave free in the seventh year, even though the master had bought him with a price. But if the slave loves his master and refuses to go free, then the master should take him before God, and he shall take him to the door or doorpost and pierce his ear with an awl. Then he will be his servant for life. When a man buys another man, he buys him as a slave. But when Christ bought us with his own blood, he didn't make us slaves. Instead, he made us his children. When seven sabbatical years are complete. The next year would be the 50th year, right? In that year, they were to sound the trumpet and they were to consecrate that year and to claim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants. This year was known as the year of jubilee. Don't we celebrate so many jubilees today? They all come from here. In this year, everyone can get back their inheritance. If a man sells his land to another, he is to redeem it with a price in the year of jubilee. If he prospers and acquires sufficient means to redeem it, he is to redeem it himself. If however, he becomes poor, his nearest relative is to come and redeem what he has sold. Aren't you thinking if it is fair to ask a person who has had a piece of land in their possession for so many years to give it back? We are not doing that today, right? God himself gives us the reason for asking the Israelites to do this. The land that God is taking them into is not a land that they bought or got as an inheritance from their fathers. Instead, God gave them the land. In the sight of God, all of them were aliens and tenants. If they obey God's commands, they would live in the land fearlessly. But if they break God's laws, God will scatter them before their enemies and give rest to the land. With this, we come to the end of the journey through the book of Leviticus, which describes the laws God gave to the Israelites on Mount Sinai in one month. In the next video, we will start our journey through the fourth book of the Bible, Numbers. God bless you.